Hi. I've been working on an ON30 um, scratch built, 3D printed model of a GE70 tonner for the Kansas City Stockyards. It was, they had several engines like this that ran around the stockyards delivering stock cars and supplies and whatever. But I want to tell you about a development that I did uh, that I think really is kind of unusual, but it'll solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. It certainly is solving a problem for me. And that is, on the cab, I wanted to be able to print the cab on the outside in my uh, kind of a reddish color here. But I've printed these sides extremely thin, um, you can see here. And so they're so thin that they're really nice in terms of getting close to a real metal thickness. But then I decided, well, what am I going to do though? Because now I've got a, the problem of printing on the inside of this cab with the green color, which is the color that I normally experienced when I was a switchman. All the locomotives in the SP were printed up kind of a lime green. Well, I found a filament for lime green, so I printed those up. I've got that started, and I've even gotten some of the dials started printing them up white. I'll print some of them black, do the best I can with the interior. The problem is the rest of this interior, what do I do with these walls? Because now I've forced myself to either match this color or go back and print this with a paint, which is kind of ridiculous, and then paint the inside of the cab to match. So I came up with the idea of let's take the green filament, and this one happens to be the print for my uh, roof here on the cab, and I just let it go for four layers, which is about uh, four tenths of a millimeter in thickness. And now what I can do is I can take that and lay that up inside here, and it becomes then my um, interior color, and I didn't have to do any painting. Then I got to think, well, that's kind of a cool idea, and, and of course we're, what we're going to do is we're going to print then the walls with the windows. This happens to match the front wall, um, and I can slip that in. Wow, we're really starting to, to come along now. I've got a green interior in there, but I need windows. The natural thing then to do is to forget about putting this in first. I took some 5 thousandths clear material, evergreen styrene, and I cut it just to fit inside here. So now I can slip that in. Let's go with the trial cab that I had over here. You've got a better example of it. Um, I've slipped that in and put that up in position. And now I take my interior wall and slip it in. And voila, I have an interior that is the right color. I've got everything uh, trimmed out correctly, and I've got windows then that will show correctly. I'll trim this up because it actually matches this cab rather than the trial one, but um, I'll have an interior here that really matches up with the windows and all in the sandwich, and I didn't have to paint anything. All I had to do was go to my 3D printer and let it work. Now, I did paint the outside, but at any rate, just a quickie idea and a quickie tip that you can take your printer, I found out on the Prusa, you can, I think you can do it with most any of them, and tell them that you want to change colors. So I brought the print preview up to the fourth layer, and then I said change color. So I don't even have to watch the printer, it'll work along, and when it gets to that fourth layer, it stops, it raises up, and it says, okay, I'm ready to change. Well, instead of changing, of course, I take it off the plate and scrape it off with my really thin uh, palette knife, and then don't change the filament, I just go to the next print, the next wall. So quick, easy way to get your interiors painted or to make a sandwich or, you know, let your imagination run. You may be able to do it some other ways as well. As always, I say, until we meet again, go down to your railroad room and let your trains put a smile on your face.